Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. Tremendous news for AMD shareholders. Congratulations, guys. OpenAI signs a multi year deal to deploy six gigawatts worth of clusters with AMD. And it seems that the rollout is going to start with the MI450, which I think is going to be that sort of inflection point for AMD's AI GPU business. Now, this fundamentally changes the narrative, as I've been announcing for years now. I've been an AMD shareholder for over 10 years. However, this shift in the narrative and the fundamentals that now I believe are going to ensue put me on track to be up 100x on AMD very soon, and then even more. I think this is a 20x pick over the next five years, because if you look at the deal on the surface, it's obviously a validation of AMD's AI GPUs, but the way I see it is it's actually a validation of the underlying platform. So for the past few weeks, I've been talking about how companies like Iron, Rocket Lab, ASTS, Tesla are actually machines that produce factories that then print highly valuable assets. And on the other side of that, you have exponential demand or, or essentially limitless demand, and that yields basically an infinite money glitch. The thing with AMD is that the reason OpenAI has now bet, has, has made a big bet on, on their technology is that AMD is the machine that prints personalized chips at a marginal cost. Why is that important? Because the, the, at the outset, AI has been about getting very big GPUs and training models. But, and, and that is sort of the direction in which this OpenAI deal is going in for now. But as AI fibrillates its way throughout the economy, so it's going to be a little bit like electricity. So at the beginning, we had the approach was, let's do these massive power plants. And then the rest of the economy sort of fibrillates that electricity around the place. And now we have plugs everywhere, powering every single thing that we use. So intelligence is going to get atomized as such. And it's going to be a tremendously valuable thing to be able to produce personalized chips at a price that competitors can't match. So if you think about AI at the edge, for example, it's really going to be all about making inferences in small devices, billions and billions of devices, phones, laptops, fridges, cars, satellites, medical devices, everything. This is going to be a huge market because it's actually how value, I think it's how most of the value of the AI uh, boom is going to get delivered. Customers don't really want uh, to train models or specs. They don't care about specs. What they want is a lower total cost of ownership and inferences that enable them to do things with AI, right? So although this deal is a great validation of AMD's AI GPUs on a standalone basis, starting with the MI450 and then obviously the ensuing roadmap, it's actually a validation of the platform. This platform, as I've said many times, is based on chiplet technology, which enables AMD to combine compute engines at will. The primary reason that these chips are so competitive is that AMD is capable of adding a lot more memory than competitors on chip. This essentially minimizes the distance. Electrons have to go from memory to compute, and that translates into fast inference. It then so happens that to train an AI model, you also have to make a lot of inferences. So this is kind of a little bit of a recursive circle in which AMD has yielded rather quickly a competitive advantage, a tactical advantage on the inference side, but that is also feeding back into the training side of the equation. And so now, and as I've been saying for a long time, AMD is positioned to capitalize on many, I would say actually trillion dollar AI opportunities simultaneously at a marginal cost. So AI data center GPUs are just one opportunity. AMD has a bunch of other big ones like AI at the edge, AI PCs. Um, gaming, I think, is going to be quite a big one too over the next decade as AI and VR come together to produce games which are pretty crazy, like the next GTA, which some speculate would be the end of the world. By the way, it was very funny. I spent the weekend at New York, and, and actually, as you walk along the, as you walk on the street, a lot of the people that you see uh, are literally identical to the NPCs you have on the GTA game, which I thought was pretty hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, this is going to be a very big deal. This is going to be, this is, I think, even more than a 20-bagger. Uh, 
so it, it's actually very similar to the iron and rocket lab place in that you just have this blueprint which enables them to print an asset which is infinitely valuable in this new economy and then you have exponential demand on the other side of it there is no guarantee that um the AI skating laws persist. And so these theses rest on that. So the risk for a thesis like this is that obviously, say bad execution, key man risk, in this case, key woman risk, with Lisa Sue, so that risk is there. Then on, as I was saying, on the other hand, if AI skating laws do not persist, that presents uh, less upside uh, for the thesis. However, if you take a step back and you sort of abstract yourself away for a minute from AI or not, so remove the labels. Humanity is consuming more and more compute every single year, and that trend has actually been the case ever since computers got started. It just so happens that th this new format in which we consume compute is called AI. So if you reason by analogy here, as I, I was saying, th there's a bit of a risk that the thesis doesn't play out, but I think the odds are quite favorable right now and then. The primary risk right now for investors, I think, is reasoning by analogy. So it just so happens that when a stock price goes up very quickly, everyone's knee-jerk reaction is, um, you know, this is a bubble. This is disconnected from fundamentals, etc. Every single person that I've come across to date that makes that statement, I believe, has a fundamental misunderstanding of how value is created with uh, AI. For now, it seems that AI is just scaling beyond human comprehension. So OpenAI management was saying it this morning on X. And qualitatively, if you just look at the time people spend talking to ChatGPT, it's, that's, that's a very strong signal. It, it shows you that basically people have AI friends now. And the, the distance between a sort of AI friend to which people are, you know, people are having conversations with this quote unquote AI friend that they wouldn't have with a human which I think is very crazy. And so the distance between that and just having an AI doctor, an AI teacher, an AI financial advisor, by the way, I'm not your financial advisor. I have to say this. It's, this is not financial advice, just for educational entertainment purposes only. My financial advisor is Ronald McDonald, from which I get these amazing picks, right? So the economy is increasingly about creating infrastructures that yield proprietary data sets that then enable you to train AI models that no one else can and that is how you become top of the funnel for that industry. So that thesis seems to be very much alive. And so reasoning by analogy, I think, is, uh, I think gets you into trouble. I think it makes you poor because if you look at how AI creates value, it's basically just automating intelligence. And the capex that's being put into that yields more intelligence and seems to increase both the top line and the bottom line for companies. It's different to the dot-com bubble in which that didn't happen. You don't see companies' debt profiles ballooning. What you see ballooning is their top line and their margins. So I think this is very real. And AMD is an asymmetric pick even today after the surge in the stock price for two reasons. One, I think it remains very much undervalued, even if it were just an AI GPU play. Two, it's not just that. It's actually a platform with a fundamental technological advantage, which enables them to take on multiple trillion dollar AI opportunities at a marginal cost and simultaneously. And for this stock to go up, say, 20x in the next five years, I believe they only have to get one of these opportunities right. And actually, I think it's quite likely that they get a number of them right. Um, the one opportunity that AMD is pointing at, which I think is, uh, I think this is going to be their kind of NVIDIA for data center moment, is AI at the edge. So here, with AI GPUs, data center GPUs, AMD has quite a bit of competition from NVIDIA and stuff like that. For AI at the edge, I believe they have no competition. And I also believe this market is just going to come out of nowhere. Because if you go back to the chat GPT idea, how people are spending more and more time talking to this thing, people will demand that sort of intelligence in every single other device. Devices are very stupid right now. And our interactions with them are actually quite dumb. But with the technology that we have already, they could become exponentially smarter and much more useful. And this is going to be particularly true as autonomy becomes a kind of horizontal ontology that powers the economy. So as soon as you have cars driving themselves, they become assets that do things for you. You can rent them out. You can send them and do, you know, you can send them to go do the shopping for you. It's, there's going to be, I think, a, a sort of on switch 
in the next two to three years where autonomy becomes a horizontal pla a horizontal platform on which everyone builds and basically devices become autonomous and intelligent. And so over the next five years, I think that physical AI, as some call it, uh, physical AI slash AI at the edge, I think becomes a much, much, much bigger market than um, data centers at present. So powered by, by the demand for large AI model training <clears throat> and increasingly so inference. Um, I think this is going to be a massive success. Uh, I got into the stock, as many of you know, over a decade ago now at $4.2. So obviously I'm up quite a, quite a lot. I think this is going to be a, so if I'm up, what, 60X right now or something, 65, I think five years from now, I'm going to be up just uh, over a thousand X probably. I think it's going to be a, just a massive success. So today the narrative has changed. You know, narratives fluctuate. For the past few years, the market was perfectly capable of convincing many investors that this was a useless company. It's not. The narrative will obviously fluctuate to the downside at some point, but I also believe that over the next few quarters, we're going to see AMD's data center business really pick up. I don't think the physical AI slash AI at the edge market is there quite yet. I think we're going to see that evolve over the next two to three years. But fundamentally, as AI scaling laws continue to persist, and as we see new ones emerge, I think this is going to be a, a very, very, very successful pick. Those of you guys that bought recently this year at the bottom when everyone was crying and I was pounding the table and so were many of you guys, because many of you guys are very intelligent, you are going to make a killing in my opinion. It's not financial advice. You guys do whatever you want with your position. But uh, as I was saying, there's a risk that AI scaling laws do not persist. But so far, if you look at reality face on and you don't reason by analogy, it's more likely than not that uh, from from those levels, I think um, AMD returns quite a bit of money. So very bullish. Today, I'm a little bit sleepy because I just flew in from New York, but I'm very energized by having spent some time in the US. I love New York. What a great city. Very inspiring. And um, it was very cool to see many, many ads of AI models. And it was very cool to see people using uh, ChatGPT. That was very interesting. And I saw many people using Snapchat too, which as many of you know, is, an, is a social media play that I continue to monitor. Not so sure about the management team, but uh, whatever my feeling of them, everyone uses this thing, which is very impressive. Anyways, guys, congratulations to AMD shareholders. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing my stuff with friends of yours that you think will enjoy it. Uh, this is a really fun job. Days like this make it a little bit more fun, but it's usually just a lot of fun, even with the downturns. I love it. So I'm super grateful for you guys being here. And anyways, have a good day. Take care. And tomorrow I'll be back into deep diver mode. We'll be doing uh, a bunch of updates this week, a bunch of uh, deep dives over the coming week. So I think it's going to be very fun, very intense and, and lots of success. So guys, take care and see you next time.